Exercise 2. In this exercise, we're going to look at how to create a Revolve feature, as well as some more advanced sketching techniques inside Pro Engineer Wildfire version 4. If you look at your manual on page 20, actually on page um, 19, you can see an image of what we're about to build. That's our goal down there at the bottom. You can see there's a cross section there. So what we'll do is we'll draw half the cross section and then mirror it over. So that's one of the tools we'll learn today. And here's the sketch that we're going to go ahead and construct. So let's go to it. To begin, make sure that your planes are turned on. And go ahead and select your front plane and find the sketch tool. Uh, with this option, when this pops up, just go ahead and hit sketch. It will automatically select a placement plane. And now take your line tool and scroll in really close to the origin. And this is because this is a rather small sketch and you don't want to make it too big. Okay, so I'll click on this vertical or this horizontal plane and draw straight up just a small little line. The V indicates that it's vertical, has a relationship, and then a little horizontal line. And I could actually zoom up a little bit closer if I want with the scroll. And then draw a line at a slight angle, like you see here. Click, and then a horizontal line. Now draw a vertical line. Now be careful here. As you draw this vertical line, you'll see that it will snap. And there's this L1 and L1 that appear in red. Those, um, that's a relationship. That means that it's, they're going to be equal. Don't do that. Let it go a little bit higher to prevent that from happening. If that happens to you, it's not a big deal. You just have to go back and delete that relationship. But um, let's go ahead and just draw this out like we see it and snap it vertical down on the plane. And then to discontinue your line, just click on the middle mouse button or the scroll button. Actually click on it. Push it down. Don't scroll it. And then release. Now what we want to do is we want to go over here and draw a center line. On this plane down at the bottom, click and drag across and click again to drop a center line. That's going to be used for our mirror. And then click on this little icon up here to go to the selection mode. You'll see there's a lot of dimensions that are there. That's okay, just leave them. And the color indicates that they're weak dimensions. Eventually we will make them strong, but for right now just leave them as is. And now with nothing selected other than the select button, down below here click and drag, holding your left mouse button, a fence around the geometry that you just drew. And then release it. And now you could go over here to the mirror tool. Click on mirror and you'll get this little selection box that appears. What you need to do is select that horizontal center line that you drew just below it. Click and it should automatically mirror everything across it. Now we could go ahead and drag out the dimensions and begin our construction. Now the way the dimensions are laid out here are not the way they are necessarily in the book. So we'll have to do some editing here. And as long as these are weak dimensions, it's pretty easy. Uh, what we can do is go to the dimension tool here, and we'll begin by clicking on that. You'll get the selection box that appears. Generally, mine is appearing on the right-hand side, so you don't normally see it. But let's go ahead and start any dimensions like we see it in the book. So for example, this line here, click on that with the left mouse button, move up your pointer, and middle mouse button click, or if you have the scroll, click once on it, and it will drop the dimension. That's one dimension we want. We'll leave it as is right now. And on another dimension we want, and you'll notice as we add these, these gray or weak dimensions will be replaced by the, the white strong dimensions. So now let's go ahead and add one here between this point and this plane. And then go straight up and click with the middle button again. And then we'll go ahead and add one from here to the plane again and click the middle button. And then let's add one between this and this. And then we'll add one between this line and this line. Now if you get a red uh, red dimension that appears, that indicates that it's overdefined. That means there's a, either a relationship or constraint as Pro E calls them, or a dimension that's interfering with it. 
And what you can do a lot of times are you'll see the, the relations that are listed here as well as the dimensions. You'll get a dialog box that appears and I hope to show that to you in just a few minutes. All right, and we still have this one here. So click on this line, click again, and then click on this line up at the top. Move up and click to drop it. And I think we have one more, and that's the angle between this angled line and this vertical line. So just click on the angled line, right somewhere right in the middle of it, and then somewhere in the middle of this line here, click. And in between this window here, uh, as I call it, just middle mouse button click to drop the dimension. And now you're free to go ahead and hit OK on here because we're done, at least with adding our strong dimensions. Now we could just modify them. So let's start from the inside and work our way out. So this dimension here, let's double click on it. And it's going to be 0.375. You'll see 0.38 because it's rounded off in the book. That's fine too. And then hit enter. Okay, and you'll see your sketch begin to change. Don't panic. It's okay. Just move the dimensions out of the way and continue. The next one is going to be 0.4. The angle is going to be 18 degrees. This dimension here is going to be 1. This one here will be 0.25. This as well will be 0.25. This will be point, or actually be 2 inches. And finally the overall length will be 2.5. And there it is. Now lay your dimensions out how you would like to see them if you were making a drawing. This will service us later when we do create drawings. It'll uh, reduce the time to have to lay out dimensions. Okay, we're ready to proceed. Now click on this little checkbox right here at the lower right to apply it. Now we need to go ahead and revolve this. Now, a good option here is to turn on this little icon here, which is your axes, or your part C, S, Y, S. And basically, we're going to select the Y axis for our, our axis of revolution, which now we go ahead over here and select this Revolve tool. And sure enough, you could go ahead and just select the Y axis, and it will revolve around it. Hit the green check mark to apply it. We want it a full 360 degrees. Be aware that you can make it less than 360 degrees. You could split it, you could cut with this, you could do a lot of different things. Um, hit apply. Now, technically, why don't we go ahead and turn off our planes? If you, you could leave them on, it doesn't matter. Um, I kind of like to remove them temporarily and bring them back when I need them. Now we could revolve with the middle mouse button just by depressing it. Scrolling will zoom in and out. And we just, if we look at the book, we are now on to the last page here. And we're going to add some rounds or fillets, as they're called, or blends, some people call them. And Pro E, they're called rounds. And here it so says select the top and bottom edges and add 100 thousandths radius. There's the rounds checkbox, and you'll see point 0.1 in this little dialog. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we'll find the rounds at the lower right corner. Click on it. Make sure you put in point 0.1 and you can select the edges. And you'll see a preview update. You could rotate it around, get the other side. You could probably blend these edges as well on the inside. If you want, have a little fun. Change some of the dimensions on them. You'll also notice this. On any round on the preview, you'll have little handles. You could grab them and drag them out to different sizes. We'll do the same over here. It's 0.38, which is basically 0.375. It's just rounding. Okay, and hit the Apply button, which is the green check mark up at the upper right. 
oh, in this case, I neglected to add one. Now you can go ahead and go back to the fillet tool and just put one in. Or being that it is a parametric model, you'll find the round one in the feature tree on the left hand side. If you want, you can actually add to that by right clicking and find edit definition. Now you could go ahead and just select the edge you want to add to it. Hit the apply button and it's added. I'll show that to you again. Right click in the feature tree on the, the round that you want to edit, edit definition, select what you want, and hit the green check mark. You could also change dimensions as well. Now you can see if we look at, we're basically done here. But if you look at this wheel, you'll see there's a series of facets that it's that make it up. It will never actually model, like if you feed this information into a CNC machine, I should say actually a CAM package that would create a tool path for it, you'll actually never see this type of faceting occur in real life. The dimensions are true. If they're a radius, they're a true radius. This is just a graphical representation and it's actually enhanced to uh, beef up your performance on your computer so it rotates faster dynamically. To change this you could go to view and there's display settings and model display. By selecting this you'll get on the right hand side some options. You'll see that um, you can actually turn on, this is kind of a nice feature, display while reorienting. That's the datums. Those are those planes that we selected, like the front plane to start our sketch. Um, also, let's go to the next one, edge and line. The edge quality. How high do you want it? Very high or medium or low? If it's a small part like this, set it to high or very high. If it's a large assembly, you might want to set it to low so your performance is better. And then we can uh, select smooth lines that will make this, the edges smoother. And then let's go to shade and the quality. Let's bump that up all the way to 10 since it's a small model. And perhaps we want to see edges on this. Edges will display kind of like what you see here, but not all the, just the, the sharp edges. So we'll go select with edges and hit apply. And now you can see the model looks a lot smoother and it's a much better representation. It might slow your models down or your performance on your computer a little bit, but if it's a small model, it's not a big deal. And that concludes exercise two. Now you could go ahead and tr give, your, uh, give a try in the lab, and then there's a quiz as well.